Hello, I'm Dan Wakeford, the Editor-in-Chief of People, and I'm so excited to introduce this very special table read for so many reasons. I grew up watching Happy Days every day in my tiny village in England. It was one of my first introductions to America, so this iconic TV show holds a very special place in my heart. This year has been so tough for so many, and there is no doubt that the work of the entertainment industry has helped us get through it. We've all watched more television and films than ever before. Storytelling and art has provided comfort and escape during these difficult times. At People, we've supported the nonprofit SAG AFTRA Foundation close to three decades. We're in awe of the work it does, assisting thousands of performing artists with a vital safety net of programs and services. For the past 35 years, the SAG AFTRA Foundation has granted more than $27 million in financial and medical assistance, disaster relief, and scholarships to SAG AFTRA members and families. So thank you to the Foundation for all of your work and for bringing us this great piece of entertainment. We're proud to kick off this fundraiser today with a $10,000 donation. We're so thrilled to have the legendary four-time SAG Award nominee, Henry Winkler, reprise his award-winning role as Arthur Fonzi Fonzarelli. <laughs> He's joined by an illustrious cast made up of this year's SAG Award nominees. None other than Glenn Close steps in to the role of Mrs. Marion Cunningham. John Carroll Lynch is playing her husband, Mr. Howard Cunningham. Eli Goray as Richie Cunningham. Aldous Hodge as Ralph Mouth. Jamie Chung as Joni Cunningham. Luke Newton as Potsy Webber. And last but not least, Nicola Coughlin as a waitress in Owl's Diner. <laughs> Enjoy this treat and here's to more happy days in the future. Happy Days Motorcycle Act One. Cunningham Living Room Day. Richie sits at the table reading a school book. What's the matter with the toaster? I don't know. It hasn't worked right since Joni toasted marshmallows in it. Oh, what a morning. No toast, no eggs. What eggs? See, that's what I mean. Yesterday, I thought I had six eggs and today they're gone. Yeah, I'm too young to start imagining things. How it comes down the stairs. Marion... Uh, Joni's been doing her magic tricks again. Look at this hat. Oh, they're my eggs. Oh, thank goodness. Thank goodness. I almost put this on my head. But I've had an egg shampoo. Catch the toast, Richie. There's no harm done. I've had enough. We got to do something about Joni's magic. Yesterday, she cut up three pairs of my boxer shorts. The ones with the presidents? Yeah. I'll talk to her. Richard, would you like to get the paper? No, thanks, Dad. I'll read it later. For me. Betsy exits out the front door. Did you hear a lot of noise last night? No, just you snoring. I didn't snore. Then I heard a lot of noise. Well, I bet it was the Nazarelli's dogs in the garbage again. They'll eat anything. They probably ate our paper, too. She enters, a look of horror on his face and no newspaper. You see? No paper. Oh, it's awful. It's... I've never seen anything like it. It's... What's the matter, Richard? Out there, it... It's terrible. What's terrible? It's it's Fonzie's motorcycle. Well, I hope Arthur didn't leave his motorcycle in the driveway again. Your father gets very upset. Is it in the driveway? Yes, yes. It's in the driveway and in the street and in the yard and in the flower beds. There's an exhaust pipe in the mailbox. Someone tried to mail his motorcycle? I, I just don't understand. Someone totaled Fonzie's bike and threw it all over the yard. Was Arthur in an accident? No. I was up when he came in last night. It must have happened after he went to bed. Howard enters holding a bent, twisted rearview mirror. Oh, what's that, dear? I think it used to be a rearview mirror. It fell out of the tree. I've never seen such a mess. There's even something in the mailbox. That's an exhaust pipe, dear. Oh, Fonzie's going to flip. He's going to come through here in a minute, walk out that door, and absolutely flip. Sorry about using your hat. I got it now, though. Joni... We don't have time for your dumb magic tricks. Don't you have to go to school? What are you, the truant officer? Joni, please, you'll be late. Put your coat on. Look, Fonzie loves that bike. Somebody's got to tell him. I'll tell him. Hey, good morning, folks. Thanks for filling up my thermos there, Mrs. C. 
What a great day, huh? Today is the day that I fix Rocky Lembeck's 49 Merc. What a great piece of machinery that is. You know what makes a guy feel great just to open the hood? What's the matter? Nothing, Fonz. Well, there is this one thing I need to discuss with you. All right, just, just make it fast, all right? Because I am in a rush, Rich. Uh, well, it's it's about Joni's new magic trick. Joni, show Fonzie your great tricks. Uh, why don't you sit on it, Richie? The kid is going to school. That is not a thrilling trick. Okay, okay, enough chatter. I gotta, I gotta get to work here. I got a big, big day. Uh, 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 Fonzie, you know, sometimes we wake up in the morning and we think we've got a big day ahead, but sometimes it turns out that the day is uh, 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 bigger than we planned. Mm -hmm. do, do you follow me, Fonzie? No. No, I don't, because I'm in a rush. Don't go out there, Fonzie. What is the matter with you people? I do not have time for this. All I want to do is get on my bike and go to work. Would you settle for one out of two? What are you trying to tell me? There's something out there you don't want me to see. Is that it? Something bad out there? You could take the bus to work. It's a good way to meet chicks. Show them, Marion. <gasps> what happened to my bike? I wish we could have broken it to him gently. Could have started small by telling him the toaster was broken. Look, he had to know. He's an adult. He can take it. It's only a motorcycle. It's not the end of the world. Oh! You see? He can take it. Howard closes the door. Fonzie's room later. I'm sorry, Fonz. Yeah, I know. I know. Thank you so much for coming. Uh... Fonzie, I think this is the last of it, except for the headlight. We can't find that. But we're still looking. Mrs. Cunningham is on the roof. You know what? You know what? I can fix it. Of course I can. Just give me a three-quarter inch socket wrench. That's all. Okay. You're going to try and fix it, Fonz? Of course I can fix it. I mean, it's in bad shape and everything, but I am the best. I can do this. I can fix this. All it takes is a little time, a little patience. You know what it's like? It's like a, a puzzle. You just fit the pieces together. It's going to be just fine. I can make this good. I could do... No, I can't fix it. This is junk. I can't fix this. I may be the best. I'm not a miracle worker. Look at this. What kind of maniac would do this? I mean, what kind of animal would leave it like this, broken and mangled? Well, it's, it's just a motorcycle. Excuse me, Mr. C. Just a motorcycle? Oh. Oh. I always thought you were a sensitive person. That it was not, it is not just a motorcycle. This was a very close friend. Fonzie, isn't that taking it a little bit far? Look, I'm going to let you in on a well-kept secret. There was a time, a long, long time ago, that I was a nerd. Yes, I was a turkey. And I tried everything. A ducktail, tight jeans, ta you know, taps on my shoes. Nothing worked. Until, until it came along. I looked different. It made me special. Mr. C, it made me the Fonz. My bike and I went to a lot together. We went to gang fights, drag races, and, and a year and a half of high school. And now all of that is over. Just a motorcycle, Mr. C, just a motorcycle. I guess your mother was just a mother. Oh, uh, I guess I wasn't thinking, Fonzie. Yeah. Fonzie, I know your bike can never be replaced, but... With the insurance money, you could at least... No insurance. No insurance. No insurance. No insurance. They said the Fonz was not a good risk, and I know why. Because, you know, when you're that cool, they take it out on you. Fonzie, that's crazy. You're right. That's crazy. I'm going nuts up. My bike is gone just a couple of hours in already. I'm turning into a turkey again. I got to get out of here. I, I got to have time to think. 
I haven't seen him this depressed since he broke his engagement with the Pelosi twins. Dear? Uh, are you still on the roof? Did you, did you find the headlight, Marion? No, but I found the cummerbund to your tuxedo. <laughs> on the roof? Oh, what a party that was. Arnold's later. Another Coke, Fonzie? Fonzie? Another Coke? Uh, uh, hey, Marsh. No, thanks very much. Oh, can I warm up your french fries again? No, 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 thanks, thanks. Hey, say, Marsha, get over here. Did, did I ever show you the picture of my bike? Uh, yeah, Fonzie showed it to me. It's a nice picture. Yeah, yeah. Of course, it was taken before um, I, I put on the chrome side mirrors. I was going to take a new picture of it, but some chick sat on my brownie. Well, it was a nice bike, Fonzie. We'll all miss it. Thanks, Marsha. Thanks for understanding. <sighs> Marsha, how's he doing? Trixie Arnstead offered him her body, but he said he's still in mourning. Oh, um, maybe you ought to try and cheer him up. Well, if Trixie couldn't do it, I don't know how you will. Smile. Hi, Fonzie. Hey, Fonzie. How's it going? Okay, if we sit down. I, uh, I saw your new wheels outside. Great looking truck. Hey, you know, it could start a new fad. Girls could get your number off the side of the door. And if you see a chick you like, you can just hook her up and haul her away. What are you doing, Weber? He's just trying to cheer you up, Fonz. Yeah, I mean, the rain may fall, but let a smile be your umbrella. How would you like an umbrella right up your nose? Oh, sure, Fonz, yeah, whatever. Hey guys. What's shaking? Uh, did you uh, did you hear the news about Fonzie's bike? The uh, news? I I haven't heard any news. I haven't even listened to the radio all day, so I haven't heard no news at all. I have no absolutely nothing new. I uh, no. Happened last night. Well, uh, there, there. See, that explains it. I had dinner with my parents. Then I watched Honeymooners, uh, 16 minutes of I Love Lucy, because I love Lucy. Then I went to my room, did geography, Spanish homework, you know, went to sleep, 1022. So there's no way I would know what happened last night. Why, 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 why would you ask? He didn't. Right. He didn't. He didn't ask. Nobody asked. Come on, Ralph. Stop clowning. Can't you see Fonzie's upset? His bike got busted up. <gasps> Gasp. Yeah. Somebody just creamed it. Every piece of the bike was broken. The handlebars were twisted like a pretzel. The gas tank was squashed like a bug. And the spokes, they, they were all over the street. The fender was down in the sewer. All right, hey, Richie, get me an umbrella. Oh, sorry, Fonzie. Yeah. All right, I don't understand. What kind of maniac could do something like this? Uh, yeah. Got me. I, I mean, what kind of twisted, sick mind? My my <laughs> carburetor. Do you understand that, Ralph? Was in a potted plant. A potted what? Oh well, uh, you know, it, it, it probably wasn't uh, like a, a, a lone person, right? Mm -hmm. It's probably like a, a gang of, of crazed vandals uh, uh, from out of state. You know, the, the kind without freckles. You hear about them all the time. They're, they're probably a long way gone by now. Mm -hmm. Gone. Crazed vandals. Without freckles? I can't listen to this. I gotta be alone. I'm gonna go sit in my truck. I was just getting him cheered up when you came in and upset him again. I better go talk to him. But he said he wanted to be alone. He didn't mean me, his buddy. That's really terrible. I mean, you, you never know, do you? I mean, it, it, it really makes you wonder. Yeah. I, I, I guess it, it makes Fonzie wonder, too. Yeah. What, what's he wondering, Richie? Ralph? What's bothering you? Nothing. Just, yeah, I, I, I guess Fonzie doesn't have any clues as to who uh, the, the gang is. No, he doesn't. Oh, well, ugh, uh, that's, that's too bad. I Ralph, do you know something about this you're not telling me? Oh, sure. Blame it on me. Everybody, everybody always blames Ralph. I wasn't Fonzie. blaming you. Well, you, you, you will. Go go ahead. I I I don't care. I don't care. I got nothing to hide. I don't, I don't care. All right, hey guys. Oh, listen to this. Potsy figured it out. He's wrong. How do you know? No, he's not wrong. He figured out how to find the guy who did it. Uh, 
Well, you, you got you, you got a witness? Almost as good. I got tire tracks on the lawn. I'm going to make a print and I'm going to match it up with the guilty car. And just like that, I'm going to just, I'm going to do, oh. Like they do it on. Um, Highway Patrol. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Highway Patrol, that's it. No, no, Fonz. Look, that, that'll probably take you a long time, huh? Yeah, right, Fonz? Yeah. Well, on Highway Patrol, Roger Crawford caught him in like, 24 hours so. that yeah. fast i hate that shit yeah and i got a new reason to live revenge Re revenge you say Re oh geez Fonz. what 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 good is it gonna do you to find this guy i mean i mean i mean what what, what, are, you, what are you what are you gonna do when you find him hey all right i'm gonna do the same thing to that guy that he did to my bike oh good <laughs> Good, well, good. It's good. It's great. I, I can't. I can't wait to get the guy. Really bust him up. Just break every bone in his body. You know. <laughs> Boy, do I feel sorry for that guy. End of Act One. Act Two. Arnold's next day. It's Fonzie. He checked my tires. My tires. Honest Patsy Weber. I gave him the idea. Patsy, he checked mine too. He's checking everybody's. He checked half the cars in town before the police made him take down that roadblock on M Street. He told me revenge has no friends. Ralph enters. He's dressed in a suit and tie and carries a suitcase. Hey, uh, Rich, I, uh, I talk to you for a minute in private. Hey, Ralph, how come you're all dressed up? No reason. Just Rich, can we talk, please? How come the suitcase, huh? Uh, Richie, Richie wanted to see it. Oh, yeah, Rich. Well, how come? I don't know. Oh, they call me a nerd. Okay, Ralph. Why are you dressed up and carrying a suitcase? Look, Rich, let's just say I'm taking a little trip and leave it at that, okay? Where are you going? West. How long are you going to be uh, west? I, no, I, I, don't, I don't know. Maybe, uh, what, two, three years? Ralph, <laughs> running away isn't the answer. Running? Running? Who's running? You have to be guilty of something around. I'm not guilty of anything. Do I look like a guilty person? Do, 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 do I? Yeah. Oh, all, all right. I'm I'm guilty. I did it. I wrecked Fonzie's bike. I was the one who did it. There. I said it. Ooh, I said it. Oh, boy, do I feel better. What a load of guilt off my chest. It's all up in you. You, you knew all the time, didn't you? You weren't exactly subtle, Ralph. Come out of there and tell me about last night. Okay. Look, I had a late date with Lola Spassky, right? The ticket girl at the Rialto? That's her. After my date, I was coming over to tell you about it, right? And you ran over Fonzie's bike? Didn't see it. He never parks it in the street. Always in the driveway. Never in the street. But all the damage. How did you? Well, after I ran over it, the first time. How many times did you run over it? And, you know, it's hard to say. The whole night's a blur. See, I ran over it, and I panicked, then backed up over it, got caught in my back wheels. I, I just lost my head. I kept trying to get out of there, and, you know, my wheels, they were just spinning and spinning and grinding and grinding. It was, it was, just, it was awful. It was, it was motorcycle all over. Ralph, there was an exhaust in the mailbox. In the mailbox, Ralph. How do you account for that? Well, see, I don't know. I thought... <laughs> Maybe if I could just, like, hide it, you know? Hide a broken motorcycle. I was scared. Scared. I, I, I couldn't think straight. I was hiding pieces everywhere. I got you know, I, I, I to get him out of town. It's only a matter of time before he checks my tires. Could, could, could you loan me $3 to go west? $3? I'm already in the Midwest. I'm halfway there already. Oh, come on, Ralph. That's silly. Just give me a little time. I'll think of something. Really? You, you could think of something? You could, you could think of a way out of this? No. But my father can. Your father? Well, well what, what does he know about being threatened with revenge? He was a cook in the army. At least wait until tomorrow. Go home. Unpack. All right. Uh, 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 Fonz! Hey, hey Malf, what, what are you looking so tense about? <laughs> Not me, Fonzie. I'm, I'm loose as a goose. Good old never care, Malf. <laughs> yeah? <laughs> Why are you all dressed up there, Ralph? No, uh, uh, uh I'm not going i'm 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 coming from church on saturday yeah uh, uh i'm uh, uh jewish jewish I'm, I'm, I'm jewish 
I, I bet you didn't know that. Uh, not not many of us uh, Irish Jews see you. Yeah. So you know, um, I gotta run. I gotta I gotta I gotta get the uh, rabbi's uh, suitcase over to the temple. It's 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 a bar mitzvah. It's what we do. Cause I'm Jewish. Cause I'm Jewish. So, guys. Calling them living room later that day. What time is it? Don't worry. How can I not worry? This could be very dangerous. It's not dangerous. You asked me to help you out. Let's do it my way. Just think of us as a team. You worry about your job. Joni will worry about hers. And your mother will... Marion, what are you doing? That's not your job. Just putting away all the breakables. Nothing will get broken. It's a good plan. Here he is. Okay, everybody, just calm down and remember we're a team. Okay. Places. Joni runs upstairs. Richie sits at the game table, as does Howard. They start playing checkers. Marion, however, stands in the middle of the room looking very indecisive. Uh, uh. Dusting, dusting. Oh, oh, right. All right, listen, I got your message. I I'm here. What do, you, what do you need to see me about? You know, I'm right in the middle of checking tires, Mr. C. Marion wants to speak with you. What do you need, Mrs. C? Well, uh, you know, Ar Arthur, um, Joni is very interested in magic. Oh. And um, she's been practicing a new trick all day. Let me get this straight. You called me all the way from work just to pick a card? It's bigger than a card trick, and it means so much to her. Oh. She's at that tender age when her little heart is just like a china doll. It's so easily broken. Marion. Yes, dear. So why not give the little kid a break? Joni. He pounds down the stairs immediately. She holds white magician's ropes in her hand. I'm going to need a volunteer from the audience. Oh, thank you, sir. Now, I'll need someone else to help me. Okay, Chubby and the little boy with freckles. Now, sir, I will need a chair, and you, sir, can take these magic ropes. <clears throat> Just have a seat, sir. Okay, all right, all right, here I am, and uh, I've only got a minute. Now, gentlemen, bind the volunteers securely. Oh, man, you guys really indulge shortcake here. I haven't got all night. Be patient. It goes very fast once they get you tied up. All right, uh, look at this. Uh, this is like a tough trick here because uh, the, the kid has really been practicing. Oh, oh, it's a clever trick. Get his ankle there, Richard. His ankle. Check. All right, how is she going to do this? I can hardly move. Are you sure? Uh, yeah, Mr. C. I mean, how, how is she going to get me out of this? I can't, you know. You can still move that foot. Uh, yeah, got it, Rich. <clears throat> this is a trick I learned when I was in the far east in my other life. In India, they use snakes for this trick instead of ropes. Now, are we ready? Yeah, I'm ready, I, I'm already tied up. Yeah, I'm ready, I can't move a muscle. Okay. Thank you, Marion, Joni, Richie. Mm -hmm. Marion and Joni exit up the stairs. Excuse me, where is the kid going? She forgot something? She's gotta check the magic book now? Richie has moved to the front door, opens it. All set. Howard and Richie bring Ralph inside. Hey, Fonz. What's new? I joined the rodeo. What does it look like? We're indulging, you know, shortcake. I didn't know I was entertaining the whole town, however. Come on, everybody. I got to check tires. Well, uh, uh, Fonz, you see, I have a confession to make. I lied. I'm not really Jewish. That's it. Come on, really. I gotta go. I gotta check tires. Fawns, there's no reason you should go out and check tires anymore. I think we know who it is that uh, bumped into your bike. What are you saying? Ralph found him? Tell him, Ralph. It who is it, Ralph? Tell me who it is. All right, I'll have tire tracks all over that body. All right, who is it? Okay, uh, well, uh, the, the, the guy is, is, is willing to help pay for damages and make amends. Who? 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 Well, well B Bonds, Bonds, the guilty party is, uh, oh, please don't kill me, Bonds. Please, 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 please don't kill me. It was an accident. I was temporarily insane. I've been mean it. I'll never do it again. I'll move away. Just, just let me live. Takes a real man to say that. What do you say, Fonzie? He offered to make good. 
Forgive and forget. What do you say, Fonz, pal? I'm gonna kill you! Fonzie starts scrambling after Ralph. The ropes hold him tight, but he struggles with everything he's got. The chair falls over and he gets one leg free. He starts crawling toward Ralph, knocking over lamps and chairs. Ralph starts screaming, frozen in his tracks by terror. Fonzie, wait! Fonzie struggles toward the screaming Ralph. Howard, Howard and Richie jump on him, trying to restrain him. Fonzie still makes headway toward Ralph. Ralph starts running around the room, screaming. He runs out the front door. We hear him <laughs> screaming in the distances as he runs away. Howard and Richie <laughs> struggle with Fonzie, who still tries to crawl out the door after Ralph. Woof! <laughs> running in the living room night. Fonzie is still tied to the chair. Howard is reading the newspaper and Richie is doing his homework. I'm just saying you can't keep me tied here forever. Sooner or later, you're going to have to untie me. And then I'll get him. Another cookie, Arthur? No, thanks, Mrs. C. But could you do me a favor? Could you just brush the crumbs right off my shirt? Oh, sure. Good night, everybody. Good night, Fonzie. Sleep tight. Good night, Mrs. C. And, and don't let the bed bugs bite. Ah, I will. I thought we were friends. We are your friends, Fonzie. That's why we kept you tied up. It, 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 we hoped you'd cool off and be reasonable. Mm. Come on, Fonzie, give in. Yeah. Yeah, you know, yeah. You're so right. Gee whiz. <laughs> I never looked at it that way. Okay, I give in. All right, untie me. Okay, here we go. You're lying. Hey, I gave it a shot. Dad, we've been sitting here for six hours. I don't think he's going to give in. Do we keep him tied up all night? Well, I guess not. His, his fingers are turning blue already. That's better. Oh. I thought you were a bigger man. I never thought I'd see the day when you'd put a motorcycle before a friend. Oh, remember, Rich? Revenge has no friends. You know what? All this hate has done to you, Fonzie. It's made you very uncool. Mm -hmm. Hold it. Hold it. It's not that I want to beat him up, gentlemen. I have to beat him up. It is sit it is street etiquette. You know, you know what happens if the word gets out? A man ran over my bike and I did not a I did nothing. A man once said to err is human, to forgive is divine. I bet that guy never had a bike. The doorbell rings. Richie opens it to reveal a very frightened but resolute Ralph Mouth. Ralph! Fonzie's loose! Go west! Go west! Let me in. I'm through running. Open up the door. Tis funeral. Richie opens the door. Ralph enters putting a motorcycle almost exactly like Fonzie's old one. Don't worry, Mr. C. I'll clean up your rug for you if I'm still alive. Sure. If. Well, Fonz... What do you think? Looks like my bike. I've been at 27 motorcycle shops looking for one just like yours. I finally found it downtown. Honest Iris all night bike shop. So I brought it over on a trial run to see if you like it. I got to take it back in an hour. You wrote it? No. Oh. No. I knew you wouldn't like that. No. So I pushed it. Five miles. Why did you pay for it? Bonds, I'm selling my car. Huh. Well, it ain't exactly like my bike. It's not? No, this one's got chrome extenders. I'll take them off. I, I, I'll, I'll do it right now. Rich, get a wrench. Get, get a no, wrench. No, no, no. Hey, hey, it's all right, Ralphie. I was going to put them on anyway. Good idea. Forget the wrench. Forget the wrench. It's a good idea, Fonz. Come here. Come here. You know what? You're not going to sell your car. You don't like the bike? I like it. I'll give the, I'll give the rest to Honest Ira myself. You will? Oh, I, I don't have to sell my car? Oh, what a pal. What a guy. Come Hey. Fonzie, what? Are you are going to pay me back by working at the garage. Oh yeah, yeah, sure, 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 sure Fonz. What a pal, what a guy, what a what a guy. Let's see a little more excitement. You're still alive. That's true. And the back to Cunningham living room. Hey, uh, Mr. C, I really am sorry I got carried away. Uh, gee, thanks, Fonz. Look, I'll, I'll work hard. I'll pump gas. I'll change tires. I'll get dirty. Do I get a uniform? You don't get a uniform. You work really hard. I'll get you a cap. Hmm. Huh. Okay? Well, that's good. I like caps. All right. I let's get down caps. there and I'll show you what to do. All right. Now, if you'll excuse me. Fonzie, are you going to take the bike out for a test ride? Later. I got to go now. Well, at, at least take it out of my living room. 
You don't understand, Mr. C. I've been tied up in that chair for six hours. When I say I gotta go, I don't gotta go. I gotta go. Hey, nobody touch my bike. Ooh. He freezes and we phase out the end. What a bunch we are. We could take this on the road. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. Everybody was just unbelievable. Oh, my God. Yeah. I'm thrilled to be part of this group. I'm not kidding. 